Yo, what's up guys, it's Lungi. So today we'll be taking a look at a first place OCG Rizeo deck profile. So uh, this evening I went to locals and I won with Rizeo. So these are the spoils. Yeah, so I also saw the, the recent OCG ban list and uh, I wasn't actually expecting them to, to hit bonfire. I was expecting them to put bonfire to three because it's very it's really really important for for Rizeo. so that consistency hit uh, is a little bit annoying so yeah we'll probably have to play like small world or something to kind of uh, make up for that loss in inconsistency because it was a, a little bit rough with just like two two copies which is why i i always played desires in the deck so yeah i'm happy that maxi finally got hit uh semi limit on maxi which is like eh because what's happening now in the ocg is like people are like packing maxis and malcharmies and it's like they'll activate both of them so like they'll activate like a malcharmy or whatever and then uh, if you ask them all charming then they'll just activate like maxi like next to it uh yeah and like if you can't negate them then they're drawing like a bunch of cards so if you open just engine you you probably just like screwed because you have to pass pass your turn or like give them cards which is kind of like which is almost pointless because they'll just draw into stuff to like stop you from continuing your plays so yeah I was, i've been experiencing like a lot of a lot of that you know people like like packing packing like you know full copies of like the the malcharmies which i don't i don't personally like i was i was actually maining like six copies of them for in an earlier list but i actually decided to actually decided to to cut them uh, not completely but yeah i'm not playing them in the main because if you go first the malcharmies are kind kind of bad and so like if you go first and then they have like maxi and malcharmies it's like if you just end your turn, right, they could have like Ash or Call by the Grave to negate the Malchar your Malchami. So it, it doesn't actually help you when you get hit with Malchami and Maxi. They don't they don't they don't actually help you. No scenarios. So yeah, the Malchamis are not in the in the main deck, but they, they're still useful, I think. So yeah, so let's take a look at the the deck profile. Uh, I, I I beat the mirror in the in the finals. Uh, I thought I was gonna lose the match. I thought I was gonna lose the match because I uh, came game one uh he went first and then uh i i had ash and then i didn't have any engine cards in my hand at like uh just like non-engine cards and then i also had like desires in my hand so i asked his uh duo drive and then he he still did some plays after that and then he activated talents he checked my hand and then he removed my my desires because the other cards were, were not actually going to be doing anything for me and then i don't know i top takes like cross cross out designator or something and then i lost game one and then game two i went first um so i got i got hit with i think like maxi or something but i still made uh, i still made dead nader which he negated and then he had a harpies for my set card but for for whatever reason like i think he he activated desire so i think he he banished like a bunch of his engines so he couldn't actually he couldn't actually like kill me if he still had his engine he, he could run 100 percent just like autocade me because i didn't have any any card any anything but like engine in my hand uh so then he just passed turn so that was a bit of a grind game two and then i managed to to like win after like 20 20 minutes or something and then uh game game three uh game three i actually had max i had like maxi and malchami i had maxi and malchami and then i i drew like a bunch of cards and he just said like detonator and like solemn and then um hole thruster so i couldn't actually break and and also the field spell he hard drew the field spell so i couldn't like completely break the field but i just had like so much advantage that it didn't, didn't actually matter so i ended up winning after like grinding like back and forth a little bit with him always being in, in like in the in the lead position in in <clears throat> In that in that game so yeah anyways uh this is the deck profile so uh yeah three copies of uh ex so these are the obvious ratios three three and then one uh you can recycle them so you don't really need to be playing more than one but one thing that i have been thinking about is because is uh so when you play into like detonator they usually just negate the meteorological aggregator uh and then yeah they negate the aggregator on the field spell and then they pop this and then you search summon and they pop and then you summon and they pop and then you summon one, one more card so uh, i was thinking about actually playing the other one uh the fifth rise your monster because if you're getting hit with like negates 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 I've, i find myself in situations where if i had the other the other one um the other rise your monster i could have actually still made a rank four through multiple like disruptions so i i think i'm actually going to be playing it I have a big tournament this this Sunday, so I'm actually going to be testing playing one copy of the other the other uh, Rizeo monster, and also it helps you with recycling because the fuel spell only recycles like two cards, so you usually want to recycle the quick play spell card and then your X Y Z monsters, and then you you'll ju you'll usually just like run out of your your main deck uh, monsters if you kind of have to grind. You won't run out like completely. <clears throat> 
but you will get into to a situation where you can't actually go through like your entire line of monsters because of that so yeah i am i am actually going to be testing the the other one because it has come up where i needed if i if i had it i would have actually been able to like stay in the game so yeah we'll be testing the other one uh, all right so then the hand traps three copies of jolly lockbird uh jolly lockbird is the mvp especially in the in the mirror match like if you draw them they can't counter this then if they don't have like if they don't have draw then like you you're probably gonna win the match because you'll be able to go through your full combo and then you'll be able to like get rid of their their dead nader or whatever they summoned and then you know they'll, they'll be on the back burner i mean they'll still have like maybe like four cards in hand but you'll have way more advantage than than they will so yeah drawing lockbird mvp mvp in the mirror match absolutely like amazing three ash blossom obvious two maxi which will be going to i mean three maxi which will be going to two uh, after the next next list and then yeah so from next week it's gonna be two copies of maxi and then yeah that's it for the for the monsters and the monster hand traps and then search card seven tachyon i don't know when this card is coming in the tcg but you definitely need this card 100 percent 100 percent need it uh two copies of bonfire which is going to one so yeah we will need be needing to play another consistency card or uh, include another engine like the the Aratama Asakitama engine. I don't really like it because you, you kind of need this, or maybe even the toy engine might actually be an option at at that point. Because yeah, only having like this as your searches can really really hurt. And I have bricked in in tournaments before where I just didn't have anything. So yeah, it's it's very important to have as many as possible. So small world will probably be yeah. I'll be testing small world in the in the deck again. Uh, and then one copy of the fuel spell. Some people play more than one copy. I don't think it's necessary because if you open the fuel spell it's like i mean it's nice but if you if they stop your your combo you you don't like you can't really like do anything and it doesn't help you in the in the bad situation that you get in where you know they more charm you and, and then you kind of have to you have to like make a play i mean i guess it's it's okay if you can make like a an xyz but they can usually just like bait this thing out anyways so i don't think more than one is, is necessary it hasn't come up actually. I usually just win before the second one comes up. One copy of uh, plugin. One copy of plugin. Plugin is is just amazing. There's a bunch of like really interesting plays you can do with plugin. Uh, for example, like if you know people are playing like droplet. If you know you're playing like droplet. Um, yeah, or like negation. You can actually if you have plugin, you can just. I did this today actually. Where I had like detonator and plug in. So they activated Imperm on the detonator. So then I just chained detonator to destroy himself. And then after that, I just summoned him back. And then I attached a, a material material to him. So he had uh, two materials. Yeah, because this attaches a material to an XYZ. So he had like two materials after that still. So yeah, plug in is very, very nice. You can also get back your, your strong uh, rank fours like Baguska. So that's also a very, very cool play to do. Uh, two copies of Desires. Absolutely necessary to play Desires in this deck, especially in the OCG where it's just like tons of hand traps and stuff you just need be needing to draw your engine needing to draw your your non-engine cards so desires i in my opinion is like mandatory and uh yeah i usually just beat the the people that are not playing desires because i just out advantage them so desires a uh, very very good card to play and then your your standard uh cross resonator and then call by the grave standard stuff ocg and then some spice thrust i didn't actually resolve thrust at all today um but the, the logic with thrust is that if i go second and i have and i have engine and i'm trying to play into like a field if they activate stuff i can just use this to draw into more to, to search for like whatever normal spell that i need if i want like I can go like for desires or I can go for uh, for talents. Go for desires, go for talents, go for talents. Uh, or, or like bonfire if I need to search for like uh, ice or EX or whatever. So that is the logic behind it. And also the other logic was if I get like more charmed, since it's any time during the turn if the opponent activated a monster effect, I could just uh, activate it and then if I make detonator, I could just set whole thruster. I can just straight up set the whole thruster, which means I have detonator and I have whole thruster, uh, which means the detonator will have three three materials, right? Three materials. And then once I pop with whole thruster, I'll be able to attach another material. So so about like four pops. So whole thruster plus detonator actually beats the uh, beats the mirror if you can negate the, the aggregator in the graveyard. So that is the logic. And then also the other talk for, for thrust was I played one copy of the Roma Cannon. I ended up siding them out going second a lot and yeah I didn't I didn't resolve uh, thrust so I didn't see the room cannon either but the logic is that if I have to end my turn due to like four hours or whatever then I can activate I can activate thrust and then I can set the room cannon and this should allow me to actually survive so even against like malice or, or whatever against malice it's really strong 
just flip their monsters face down when they have like two monsters uh, or three monsters before they they actually summon before they summon the, the searcher I forgot its name now uh, red ransom before they summon red ransom you can just activate the rumor and then they probably won't have any other plays after that and then in the mirror match uh, you can just uh, allow them to go through ex go through uh, thod or sword rise y'all and then you can flip this then or you can wait for dual drive and you can flip it on on the dual drive so yeah that is the logic behind meaning to my cannon i kind of want to test some more but i don't actually have a, a local before before my big tournament on sunday so i'll just have to test this some more online uh, it was working pretty well online and then last card in the main deck is three copies of infinite impermanent so that's it for the main deck now for the extra deck one copy of the goddess the goddess is very important for a special combo that i'm playing in the deck this combo is like very strong uh, i beat like a number of people yesterday and today with the combo like it's really nuts uh yeah so i'll, I'll kind of show you near the end the combo uh, one copy of abyss dweller didn't summon abyss dweller good to have though one exiton knights summon exiton knights number of times yesterday and today tournaments uh one copy of baguska of course mandatory to play baguska and then this card is actually an mvp it's it's really really good against like voiceless i actually lost yesterday in the finals to voiceless because i couldn't actually get over the 4k guys yeah my my extra deck wasn't very good yesterday yeah there was a lot of cards like lacking so i ended up losing because my extra deck was lacking this guy is very good in the mirror very good against uh, voiceless voice uh, at the start of the the battle phase you can use this effect and then negate all n negate the effects of all your opponent's monsters so then the voiceless voice guy will go back to like 2000 and you can just beat over him then use his effect to attack again attack over low so this allows you to easily like eliminate it eliminate him and also they have a hard time like attacking over him because you can just activate you don't have to detach for for the effect so start of the battle phase just use his effect and then you just negate everything at that point they would have already used his negate effect due to your like disruption so yeah they can't actually they have a hard time getting over him and you can just also like revive him with your quick play with uh reload uh two copies of duo drive uh, haven't really needed a third third copy but some people play three copies just so that uh, to kind of like relieve the pressure on the field spell having to like recycle him because your usual player would be just be like dumping him you you want to dump him so that if your opponent has like hand traps it, it's especially good if you if you like hard open the field spell yeah because you can summon him use his effects and then you have your field spell up so if they try to ash him uh, when ash resolves you just detach a material and negate ash and then he will attach the material again so then you'll still have two materials and you use his effect to to search so yeah so if you're hard with the fuel spell uh, you need to be sending a uh, drive to the graveyard play around hand traps and then uh double detonator just uh yeah of course your boss monster mvp two detonators and then one laplacian could have summoned it but but didn't summon it but it's definitely needed i didn't have it against voices voice yesterday if i had it i would have won and then 104 as the target uh, and then now the special cards in the extra deck Ptolemyus, uh Diamond, and Durandal, and then obviously Mirror Logic. So, this is the special package that I'm playing. So, so the reason why I actually included Dugardus because Dugardus wasn't in the list originally, but the reason why I included him was because I needed to be digging for digging for cards, and the card that I'm actually digging for is Droll and Lockbird. Um, if like for the old school players, they know this combo. So basically, uh, so you'll just summon Ptolemyus with like two materials. During the end phase, you'll attach a third material. And then during other players' turn, you can detach three materials from Ptolemyus. And then you can special summon a rank a rank five stacking over him. So you just summon this. So so I have Ptolemyus on the field and then I have like dual drive with like two materials. That's the usual like usual field after you go through your place. So, so then, the opponent activates a search card like they just activate bonfire or whatever so you chain Ptolemyus to bonfire so when so Ptolemyus will resolve summoning uh, artifact Durandal they'll search for bonfire and then after the resolution of the search quick effect you activate you activate your artifact Durandal so that if the effect is to like both players shuffle as many cards from their hand back into the deck and then they they redraw like the same number of cards so you activate his effect and then you chain draw and lockbird so since the effect was already activated it will try to resolve as much as possible so draw and lockbird will prevent either player from searching or drawing cards and then this will shuffle both players hands back into the deck i uh, usually would just set all your important cards anyway anyways and then your opponent will have to shuffle the entire hand back into the deck and then they'll have like no cards left and then it's gg so usually they, they insta scoop so i hit a number of people with that and um they, they they the opponent does have some the opponent does have some some counters 
some counterplay, but like for example, they can ask this, but you can just negate Ash with the field spell, right? So that's one. So yeah, so Ash doesn't actually work against this. And then uh, they can also like, they can try like Imperm, Imperm this, Imperm him. So if they got nothing on the field, they could chain Imperm and then, and then target target him. So Imperm works and then Call by the Grave on Drone Lockbird. Of course that also works. Uh, so yeah, there, so there are a number of ways to kind of, you know, S like survive or like counter it but if they don't have any of, of those cards because usually they'll use imperm on your turn anyways um so yeah if they don't have any of those cards to counter then it's just straight up gg so it has to be like imperm or call by the grave i guess cross out also works on like cross out on drawing lockbird but if you have your own cross out you could just like negate like the call by the grave yourself so yeah that's why i i side side in like solemns to make the combo even stronger like game two game two and three game two it's like almost like instant if i if i manage to dig for drawing lockbird it's just like it's just like game instant game and uh, yeah i will show you the combo uh, afterwards uh next the side deck uh two copies of shifter kind of wish shifter went to three i think shifter is a necessary evil a lot of people won't agree with me but a lot of like graveyard based decks are just like insanely like broken i think maxi is like too much of like uh, a counter like too strong of a counter for like special summon decks and then i think shifter like can still be you can still play under shifter so it doesn't completely doesn't force you to to end your turn like maxi does because maxi you know they draw like a million cards uh, and then one copy of nibiru so it's just a contingency i lost i lost a mirror yesterday because i had i had mulch armies so i was drawing a bunch of cards but you know he he calculated for for like game and i guess he he kind of guessed correctly that i wasn't playing nib in the deck i didn't have nibiru so he just like risked it and then he managed to like OTK me while I had like 20 cards in my hand. So yeah, Nibiru is a contingency. People are, uh, I guess they're getting way too comfortable with just like playing, playing for free. You know, they think they can just like play for free and then try to OTK you. So Nibiru, Nibiru is here. Just as a contingency. Uh, yeah, I did actually like draw it and then, and then use it against uh, the mirror match. So yeah, caught them by, by surprise, which kind of shouldn't. But And then one copy each of the Mulch armies. So this may seem crazy too some people because people are like maxing out on the mulch armies but these cards are very highly they're highly variant right so you could side in three copies of them and then not see a single copy and then there's a there's like a high risk of top decking them and once the game is in progress these cards are kind of useless because you almost always have cards in the field so like post like like turn zero your turn zero your, your opponent's like turn one they're not very useful and like i played a number of tournaments where i was like maining them and they were very detrimental and of course they don't counter themselves if you have like mulch armies your opponent mulch armies you if you end your turn by not doing anything which is what's needed if you know if you want to resolve them then you know your opponent could have counters you know even if they like discarded two cards they have three cards left they draw another card like they almost always have a have a counter so that's why i just reduced him to like just one copy i'll side in the one copy if i don't see it then it's it's fine it's like whatever if I do see it, then it's it's good. And then I know that once I've used it, I'm not going to see another copy, you know, for the rest of the duel. So yeah, playing one one of each. This one is better against the mirror match. Siding both of them, one both of them against the mirror match. And then this is also nice against like vo Voiceless Voice. Well, someone like twice, maybe like three times from the hand. So you draw like three cards against Voiceless. So yeah, one each of the mulch armies. You can also use them as, as cross out targets at one. And then the spell cards, uh, one Dark Ruler No More, Heavy Storm, Harpies, Feather Duster, and then one copy of D Fissure. So the logic behind the the D Fissure is that if, if I see my opponent playing cards like Drone Lockbird, Effect Veiler, um, Droplets, cards like that, and then when I go first, I'll just have like D Fissure, especially if it's like Snake Eyes. So if I open D Fissure, I can actually activate D Fissure after I summon EX, which you can't do with, with Shifter, but it's almost almost like a third Shifter. So I'll just activate it and then I'll just like play and then they can't draw me. If they have something like Droplets, then they can't actually like send them a monster cost. So they have to send like a, a normal spell card. So which which will allow me to, to be able to trigger Dignator to, to destroy destroy something so i'll still be able to chain to chain to the to the drop blue with detonator i uh, didn't see it today though uh, just one copy of like dark would no more because i was playing thrust in the in the main deck and then red reboots one evenly matched dimensional barrier and then three solemn judgments judgments always go in game two game two and game three going first just because they're people citing like a lot of heavy heavy hitters and I was playing anti spell until like yesterday. I was like, I, I played anti spell and I flipped anti spell, and then it actually worked against me. It worked against me. Uh, like I couldn't really get rid of the, the anti spell, so I could have actually killed my opponent 
with like my quick play but i couldn't get rid of my anti-spell so i searched the quick spell quick play spell card but then i couldn't get rid of anti-spell so then my opponent survived like another turn which allowed them to come back so anti-spell i don't think is actually that good in this in this deck you just have to you have to play around like your own one and just waste an ice and ice effect because you you send it and then summon ice and then you don't get the effect because it was special summon so yeah I took out the the, the anti-spell fragrances so one d barrier got the thrusts one evening match this thrust but a lot of the time i was just like siding in like the just like the one copies and then i did see Dark Ruler no more in the mirror match. Very, very good in the mirror match. You just like activate it, then you negate whatever they have on the field, then you don't have to worry about it, which means you can easily kill their, their dead nader. So it worked out fine. What I'd probably change in the side deck is just uh, is maybe maybe change this defeasure. Maybe change defeasure. But there's no third copy of, of Shifter, so kinda of, kinda of iffy iffy on that. Side deck worked really well, I th I think. And it was very easy to side because I didn't have like, you know, three copies to, to have to like side out. Uh, even when I play three copies in the side decks, like a lot of the time, I'm not actually like siding in three copies. So just, just like one, 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 it allowed me to cover a lot of, a lot of matchups, a lot of, a lot of bases. So yeah, I'll probably be keeping the side deck as, as is, but I, I'll probably take out the, the thrust out of the main deck, depending on how, how the online matches go for the tournament this weekend. So I'll just have to, I'll just have to see. So now, uh, let's take a look at the combo. So yeah, so we'll just start with like EX and then four, four random cards. Doesn't really matter what you start with. So we'll just shuffle up. All right. So here's the four random cards. There's already drawn Lockbird in the, in the hand. So that's, that's good. All right. We'll go EX. Dump dual drive, EX effect, get sword, just summon sword, sword effect, get ice, and we will overlay. Dual drive, dual drive's effect, attach, effect, get fuel spell, and quick play spell card. Then we'll activate the fuel spell. All right, now we will normal summon ice, ice effect, ice will summon node from the deck. Then you shuffle your deck. So at this point, you'll go for Dugares. All right, cut. Then we'll go for Dugares. All right, Dugares, draw two cards, one. Two and then discard one card. Uh, probably just discard imperm. It's called imperm. All right. Next, uh, we'll activate plugin. We summon node and then we can attach a material. I uh, will attach another sword from the deck, or if you like, you can attach this. Yeah. Attach whole thruster. Few spell effects. Recycle and then draw one. So next up, you'll just use node. You use node and then you'll summon back the fire. In case for like bystools or something. And then over here, you'll go for. Ptolemaeus. So you go for Ptolemaeus and then you'll set all your spells and traps face down. And then in the end phase, you'll attach diamond. Right, you'll attach diamond and then you end your turn. So in the draw phase, you can just maxi bait out any like call by the graves or or uh, S blossoms or whatever. So then they'll activate a search spell card. Then you activate Ptolemaeus, then it will resolve and you'll summon. Artifact Turandal. So they'll add to their hand. So on resolution, activate Turandal, training one, and then they'll chain whatever or not chain. And then you go draw a lockbird. Then if they have called by the grave, we drew another draw and lockbird. So activate both of them. So shuffle back and then no draws because they're drawing a lockbird. So then you can then they'll end their turn because like there's nothing they can do. So then on the next turn, I uh, just draw, then you just activate, you activate. And then you will search for quick baseball card and then also search for search for ice search for ice so i believe yeah i believe this should be should be game so normal summon and then they don't have anything so it's like at that point they'll probably just scoop anyways so then yeah i just attack for game if they didn't scoop for some reason so yeah that is the combo uh you don't go for dead nader in the combo you don't you don't need dead nader because your opponent's not gonna have any cards anyways uh but if you hard draw the drawn and lock bird like we did, then you don't actually have to go for Dugades. You don't have to go for Dugades. So you could just summon Dead Nader and then summon Ptolemaeus and then end your turn. So a nice thing, another nice thing about Ptolemaeus and Diamond is that uh, Diamond actually prevents your opponent from sending cards from the deck to the graveyard. So Diamond is also good against like cross decks or any decks that have to like send cards from the deck to the graveyard um i'm not sure which which decks exactly are, are, are like that now i know diamonds i know uh, dinos can can do that and also any any card that would return from the graveyard to the hand is banished instead so no like no graveyard like recovery for your opponent so if they, you're playing against voices voice and they try to recover a card from the graveyard or the continuous spell card then diamond would literally just banish their card if they just try to recover and uh, it negates dark monsters effects as well so uh yeah you, you you can actually stack three materials on like Ptolemaeus because you can summon it with up to I guess like five materials. So three materials on Ptolemaeus and you can just use its effect during your opponent's turn and then you can stack diamond over it. 
and then diamond will be able to be able to like negate so if diamond has multiple multiple material if you're playing more telenites i was playing daltoros as well so you yeah if you're playing like more telenites so you s summon this with like three materials and then you attach daltoros then you detach three materials then diamond has two materials so against the dark deck you can just negate you can negate twice yeah you can negate twice uh if you have your rise your like hole thruster and stuff like that you can attach more materials to ptolemaeus so allowing you to negate multiple dark monster effects with with uh, diamond constellar diamond so against malice uh, it's just gg like diamond with two two materials is gg against against malice you can also negate the the buy steals which are really really annoying which is why you it's it's maybe kind of better than detonator against against malice if you can summon both of them then it's really really good because then diamond will just like negate the, the monster effects negate the they get the buy steals so yeah it's it, if they can't out it it's, it's basically just game anyways thanks for watching please leave a like comment subscribe and i will see you next time peace